Hey fam, YouTube family. I am going to be pressure canning some onions today. I started my pressure canning journey, I wanna say about almost a year, or it's been almost a year now I've been pressure canning because I feel like pressure canning is essential in these, in these times that we are living in to have your own canned food on your shelves so i've been learning how to pressure can and i have all these extra onions that are gonna start going bad so i said you know what let me pressure can them because i never thought to pressure can onions before and then i saw a lady do it on youtube uh pressure can onions uh, many people have done it so i said you know what I am going to pressure can these onions, do some caramelized onions. So I have my pint jars here and I'm going to cut all these onions up. When you first uh, start pressure canning, you always want to just make sure you have clean jars. I have my uh, boil, uh, uh, soapy hot water guys so soapy hot water i usually use my uh, dishwasher but because it's only like four like five or six pints i just put them in some soapy hot water and then i'm gonna get all these onions cut up and into the pot for five minutes i'm just gonna cook them down for five minutes i'm gonna put them in these jars and then they're gonna go into my t foul pressure canner for 40 minutes so that's just the synopsis of the whole thing and you know a few minutes if you're in a rush and you just want to know exactly what needs to be done but i'm gonna just do you know the steps here on video for somebody who might want to see a step-by-step -step process of it okay so everybody can see i'm gonna speed this up so it's not gonna be a long video so i'm just gonna get started with just cutting them so you can see how they're gonna be cut and i'll you know show along the process step by step so yeah facebook family so i have not forgotten to make the video of because my last video if you haven't seen that you can go check it out it's called emergency preparedness I was just, you know, explaining on how I was, I felt led by God to just do that video randomly because most people don't realize how important it is to just prepare for the times that we're heading in when it comes down to, um, you know, preparing your homes and your hearts and your mind, not just your homes, but your mind as well, your spirits, getting your mind and your spirit right. If you don't know Jesus Christ, it is never too late to get to know him. But definitely preparing your hearts and your minds, but also your house. Get your house in order. You know, prepare for times of famine because, ooh, I forget. I don't even want to be up here crying because, you know, your eyes get watery when you start cutting onions. So I am going to just do this really quick and then I'm going to be back with the rest of this video. And somebody is at my door, so I'm going to be getting that. One moment, please. One moment. So these are going to be how they're going to be cut, though. So if you see these, these are how they're going to be cut, the thickness. Into, I'm going to cut all of them up like this and then put, throw them in the pot. That's how they're going to be cut. But I'll be right back, guys. Hey, guys. Okay, so I have gotten all the onions chopped up, as you can see. And they're about, you know, you can really slice them how you want to slice them, as thick or thin as you want to. Um, but they're going to go on the stove and simmer for about five minutes. Um, like I was saying before, I have learned how to can because we just need to be canning in these times um I, I started canning meats all kinds of beef chicken you could literally can whatever you want there's a, a book on canning um they have a ball book or whenever you buy your uh pressure canner the pressure canners usually come with 
a guide on canning and what you can can and you know different recipes and the the times that you need to pressure can whatever you're cooking they have the timing that you need to pressure can it for the onions are 40 minutes in pint size or quarts either one 40 minutes so also something to keep in mind whenever you are pressure canning something hot like if you if you're whatever your product is like if you are pressure canning chicken onions vegetables whatever it is hot pack hot pack is basically if the food the content the whatever the items are if it's hot you want to make sure they're going into hot jars um if it's cold that's a cold pack or raw pack i think it's called raw pack or you know they're they can be cold so what how whatever the temperature of your product is that's this that's what you want your jars to be if it's hot your jar should be hot if it's cold then your jar should be cold and then you want to make sure that you put it in the canner with either hot cold or warm water whatever the temperature of your food and your jars are because guess what if it's not you can risk breaking your jars your jars will just crack or well, you it'll sound like popcorn in your your, your canners uh, trust me i've done, i've done this okay i've made that mistake so you want to just make sure that everything is the same temperature same temperature this is going to go on the stove for about five minutes i will be back okay so i did have to change the pan that i had the onions in because the other pan it was a little more uh deep instead of wide and narrow you see this gives it more of an even cook this kind of a pan so this is kind of what mine is looking like and i'm gonna just turn it off i have a soup cooking back here but um i'm gonna take this off now and honestly this was cooking this was up here for a lot longer than five minutes i'm gonna say this was probably about 10 like 15 minutes maybe even 20. so you know these are translucent and cooked down by the way guys this is my first time doing onions so we are going to be doing onions together for the first time if this is your first time and you're trying to figure out how to press your can like i was okay and even though let me just put this back up here even though um you know i pressure i pressure can all the time especially when i first started almost a year ago i was pressure canning literally like every other day or every couple days I was buying new stuff because I was trying to get my pantry, get my um, stockpile up when it come when it came down to pressure canning canned foods, you know, making meals in a jar, things like that. Because you can also go buy canned goods because that's another smart way to go too when it comes to a time when we can't go get fresh produce or, you know like i've spoken in my previous video a time of famine when there's not a lot of food and you need to rely on what you have in your home so let's be like joseph in the bible and stock up while we can while we have plenty so and then that's in some places because in some places there's not plenty so you know these onions i had extra onions so canning these up this is for every for anybody that's a new canner like this is probably your first time i had bought this when i first started um it's just a canner set what it has in it is your funnel so you could use your funnel i use it sometimes sometimes i don't um this is your jar grabber i was using this upside down when i first started i was using it no, wait, this is the right way. Wait, this is the right way. I was using it this way, grabbing it like like this. Completely wrong, 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 wrong. 
the way you're supposed to grab it is this is shaped like a jar so you grab it like this and it's so much easier this way you learn these things and this is a debubbler this is a, ma a magnet to grab your lids which i need to get those and some hot water but um this is just like a little magnet that you you know pick up the lid and you know just in case you got stuff on your hands you put the lid on with this i'll show y'all that in a second this is a debubbler this is like one of the most important parts um being that there's no liquids going in here i'm still gonna debubble it like just push take out the air bubbles because that's what this is for to take out the air bubbles because if you leave any types of air bubbles in your jars especially if it's liquids you risk the chance of botulism and that is like when bacteria grows in the jar just it won't be safe to eat i'm just learning about all of this stuff so you know you guys in the comments when y'all be you know teaching people y'all are so helpful the youtube community because even in other videos you know y'all are helpful when y'all put comments and you know just y'all expertise on things the things that y'all know about it it helps so onions we are going to get these onions into this these jars i'm gonna pick them up with this fork and then and then just start let me actually run and wash this all good I usually clean out all my stuff, re-clean, because they're already clean, but this, you can never be too clean. Just clean it again with some more soap and water. Go sit down, girl. Here's my little daughter go. Just wanting to be up under me. All right, go sit down. Go sit down. All right, I'll, I'll pull it. All right. Don't sit now. You can't do stuff around kids. Don't get, don't have me, don't think you won't get popped because it's camera on, okay? Don't show off. Okay? Girl. Okay, anyway, so we're going to get these onions into the jar. Kids, they try to be so slick. So slick, you think, because I got this camera on. Discipline and stops. No, boo. This does not work like that. Okay. So I'm gonna just stuff as much as I possibly can in these jars. Get as much in there. Can y'all see? I'm just stuffing them in there. And it's supposed to be to the shoulder of the jar give it like a head inch uh a inch space to the top so like right around here like right around that mark okay i think i could fit a little more and try to get up as much in there as possible okay yeah so that's about it so up to here, Let's fill these up. I think I should probably be able to get all of this into all six jars. We'll find out, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I, had, I got about four full jars to the shoulder. And one of them is like about almost a little above halfway. I'm still gonna pressure can that too. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna, you know, debubble it, which is like just sticking the debubbler, or if you got a butter knife, or you you can use whatever you have and just debubble. Just stick it in there to get those air bubbles out. And you see that sometimes when you debubble it actually 
lowers the amount of content that you have in, in the jars because this is went down a little bit. So I'm going to debubble this one as well. And you see it made its own juice. Like the onions, when you um, put them in a pan and you start to cook them down, it makes its own juice. You can also put that remaining juice into the jars. I didn't do that, but you can do that if you want. I think what I can do, I don't know if y'all can see it good, because it's, it's coming down a little bit. Like, it's getting lower than the, at the shoulder. So what I could do with this half jar, I could probably put more into um, to pack it good. I could put more. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And so also what you should have is, um, oh, why is it on me? I put some vinegar in the top. You could put it in like a little bowl, but you're gonna wipe the the rim of the jars down with vinegar. They say use vinegar, like from when I was learning, uh, use vinegar because if you're using like a product with high fat content, like chicken or butter or anything that you're pressure canning with that has a high fat content, the vinegar wiping it down with vinegar will make sure that you get all of it off so that way you won't have a problem with your lids sealing these are your lids um these little that little brown around there that's what's gonna seal and stick and stick to the jar to seal it and this preserves it for, they say, 18 months. Some people say, you know, 24. Some people say years. However long it lasts is not really up to me. I don't know. But I'm just going to, um, you know what? Let me, use, let me use my funnel. So I don't make a mess on the camera. So I'm just gonna add some more. This way it'll only be four full, actual full jars. And let's see, I hope y'all can still see. We gonna see how this come out together, you guys. But I am doing the right steps. This is this is my first time doing onions, but I'm doing all the right steps. And so when you put them in a the pressure canner, you want to make sure you have like a rack at the bottom. Most pressure canners come with like a um a rack. I'm gonna show y'all in a second. But you just don't want it to be completely touching the bottom of the pan because when they start jiggling in there from all that pressure, all that heat in the pressure uh, canner, you know, your jars could break or fall over or whatever the case. So you always got to make sure it's a, a rack in the bottom. And when you water bath a rack or like a towel or something like that, I didn't water bath these because they said it, they don't recommend water bathing for onions but some people probably do but that's not what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pressure can them so yeah i got four full jars y'all so i'm gonna just do a little bit more be bubbling make sure you get all those little bubbles in between and i i get in there because I don't want no problems with my jars when I decide to open them. Because honestly, for me, when I do these pressure canning, uh, when I when I pressure can anything, my my food is 
just to sit for as long until I really need them. Like some people just do it just to have meals for the week, for the month. This is for when it's a time when I really need it. So, like if it's nothing in the grocery stores and you got to eat what's in your house, that is what my food and my cans and my jars are for. All the stuff in my um, storage, my food storage. All right, so it's completely debubbled. All right, so I put, this is the perfect can. I'm using a tea fowl. It is a 23 or 22 quart pressure canner. Um, I put about two liters. It's literally like this much water. When you look in a pot, it should only, you know, it shouldn't come above. It should come up to like right here on the can. So you only need about a liter of water, two liter, depending on two liters, depending on how big your pressure canner is. I'm going to turn this on. You want to get it pretty high because you need the steam to start really steaming. Okay, the next thing, this is a piece of napkin I just broke off. Pick this out. So I'm going to just wipe these lids off. I mean, not lids the tops the top of the jars I'm gonna wipe the top of the jars off just like this make sure I get all around there there's a piece of the onion up there so I'm gonna wipe this one again let's use the bottom Dip it, wipe it again. I'm gonna just go around all of them again. I like the extra clean them because I don't want no problems with my jars sealing. You go through all that work, especially when I'm doing like chicken or a meal, like a soup, a stew, or something. Like, I it, your heart it, it breaks my heart when my jars don't seal. So you want to make sure they are cleaned good. And then, oh, I don't even have no rings over here. I got to get some rings going. But oh, I wanted to show you before it gets too hot. See, don't ever do that if the heat has been on for a while. But this is like the, the rack that goes. Mine came with two because I could get 18 pints in my uh canner because this is a 22 quart 22.5 quart or something like that or 23 quart one of the two but it's a tea fowl that's the brand um some people use an all-american mine is a tea fowl this is what you want to have at the bottom of it if you have a lot of jars and you're doing like 18 or more than nine goes at the bottom and you can put the second one on top and you could fit more depending on how many um jars you're doing if you have quart size if you have quart size uh jars you can only fit i believe seven seven quart size no no stackable it doesn't stack but seven quarts inside one um session one can of session Seven at a time. It's okay, so I'll be right back. I'm going to just get the, um, but for now, let me just do this. This is what this magnet does. You just sit it on top. Boop, just like that. Sit it on top of the jars. I have it soaking in some hot water. I clean them, you know, get them good, soapy, clean. And now I have them sitting in hot water and now they're on and now they just need lids. I'll be right back. This is 
all my legs. This is not even all my legs. I probably would have maybe two or three of these full if I had them all in this one. They don't fit, so I'd be having to take some out and put them, put them away. But this is how much I've seen over the last couple of months, almost a year now. So they're all like washed really well before they go into this I'll soap them down and clean them really good and now I'm just going to wash them off again and so these are gonna go into this warm water because these are warm jars I just turned the canner on. I just turned the fire on on the canner. Okay, so I'm gonna show y'all the, because for all the newbies who never can before and they may, you know, need to see how you put it in a pressure canner and the gauge and when the gauge how it works with the gauge starting to go up okay so when you put the lids on finger tight I opened that I see I could take that off real easy you put it on finger tight I didn't know what that was when people said that when I first started I'm like finger tight because the thing is if you crank it so you shouldn't be cranking it till you get it closed tight so just don't do that because what happens is you won't be able to open it and you won't be able to the content won't really be able to pressure like it, it'll be it, it needs to it doesn't let me not even try to go there trying to explain that but just do it finger tight okay it's more than because it won't be able you won't be able to open it once it comes out it needs to be able to actually pressurize inside the stuff needs to be able to pressurize inside the jars okay so finger tight as soon as it closes just bring it tight. I always recheck to make sure it opens. I could twist it off easy. Okay. So if you never used this thing before, this is you just pick it up like this. But because my the canner is not hot, I'm just gonna sit them in like this. Also, with my remaining vinegar that's in the top, I'm just going to pour it in that water because what it does is it keeps the jars from getting cloudy i know what that was either when i first started i'm like cloudy what do you mean it just the jar sometimes turns white you could you don't have to do that you don't have to waste your vinegar doing that if you do not want to but um i just do it because that's what i started out doing so put these in some people may be wondering, well, how many jars can you fit and how, what's the least amount that can go inside a can, a canner? Two, two pints or even two quarts. I wouldn't put any less than two. So if you have one, you know, jar, I wouldn't do one, but at least two minimum of whatever it is you're trying to press your can. So let me take y'all over here so you can see. That's how they are sitting in. As you can see, the water is very low. It only comes, can you, I don't know if you can, the water is very low. You can see it's all the way down here. So don't have a pot full of water. It shouldn't be a pot full of water. It should be literally enough to get it to a good steam because it's gonna be in there steaming. Okay, so this is T file, T file, that's the brand. And it's gonna go, it's like a little arrow on mine. I don't know if you could see it, but you just make sure that the arrow is, um, the arrow here and the arrow here is connecting and then you just close it so that's how that works and now that's on good you're gonna make sure 
that your your gauge is on steam so this little dot it should be on the steam it should be on steam and then once you once this starts steaming it's going to be steam that comes from here all this pressure because you have to let the canner fill up with pressure it has to get all the steam out so that's gonna happen for about 10 minutes you want it to steam for about 10 minutes but you have to wait until you actually see steam coming out of here if you have this brand of pressure canner you'll see the steam start to rise from this little hole right here you'll see the steam 10 minutes it has to steam for 10 minutes if you're unsure wait until it's real steamy and you you can't help but see all the steam coming out but even when you start seeing a little bit of steam that's a steady steam it has to be a steady steam flow 10 minutes of steam coming out that's really important it will sabotage the entire process if you don't allow it to let all the steam out for a consistent um the minimum of 10 minutes so let it steam let the steam come out for 10 minutes have it on steam then after 10 minutes of the steam coming out you're going to change it to to whatever your altitude whatever your altitude is you can google it wherever you are in the world your altitude your is either going to be on one two or three it's either going to be uh five pounds ten pounds or fifteen pounds whatever whatever type of pressure can you have it'll have it on the instructions but for my altitude it is 10 so i put mine's on two once it's on two for the gauge you're gonna see this um gauge is gonna once it gets to two it's gonna take a few minutes you have to pay close attention to it but once it gets to the two that's when that's when you start your timer for the 40 minutes so you see it's a process before you just you know you don't just put it in a pot and then start the 40 minute process for whatever it is you pressure can and that's the whole that's the process each time you let it steam for 10 minutes you change it to two whatever your altitude is and then you wait for the gauge to go up to two three whatever it is whatever your altitude is but you are going to yes when the um when your pressure dial reaches two that's when you start the 40 minute timer so i am going to come back once it gets to the steaming point so you the steaming part so you can see what i'm talking about okay i'll be back okay this kind of steam uh oh that kind of steam I didn't like the sound of that. It sounded like maybe one of my tops came off. I might have to start this whole process. Boo-boos in the process. So what I might have to do is actually, I'm gonna, but that's the type of steam that you need. I'm gonna have to do the whole process over because I think one of my tops came off and I'm gonna have to tighten it. So you don't want it to be too tight, but you don't want it to be too loose. So let me see what's going on in this canner. Canner, I will be back and I'll let you know what happened. Yeah, guys, exactly what I thought. I heard that at least it didn't crack. I used to have so many problems with, because the the temperatures of the jars and the temperature in the canner, I used to, it used to, my jars used to crack when I first started out. I used to make so many mistakes. But because this was on not tight enough, it popped off. So that's the thing. It has to be, it's so tricky with this. It has to be finger tight, but it can't be too loose. It can't be too tight. So you really have to have it at the right tightness. And this never usually happens to me. I guess because I'm trying to show y'all I didn't do it tight enough. But I'm going to retwist that on, get it back to that steam, and then show you the process after it gets to that steam. So that's going to take a, a little while. So once I get back to that steam, that 10 minute steam, you saw what it looked like when it needs to get to that steam. It needs to do that steam for 10 minutes. We'll um, finish off after it gets to that uh, 10 minute steam. I'll be back. 
Okay, guys, so I restarted the canner. I had to let it steam again up the, for the 10 minutes. And then I turned it to the two. Ooh, that's hot, so be careful, don't touch it. I turned it to the two. And then the pressure went up to two here. So you see now it's on the, the two here. So it starts to rise once it once you put it on two, it starts to slowly, the gauge starts to slowly go up to two. And once it hits the two, it should stop there. It shouldn't go up no more. It might go a little bit past the two, which is fine, like on that first um it's like three blocks. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's like four blocks in between the two and the three. If it goes up to that first block, it's fine. If it goes up to that first block, but it shouldn't go too much past that. Um, if it does, you might just want to turn your fire down slightly. But it can never go underneath the two. If it goes, if the gauge drops underneath the two, the, the gate, the dial, you got to start the process all over again. So don't let it go underneath the two. Um, I think one of my tops, I did it over and I think one of the tops came off again. This is what I recommend. Only get ball jars. I and ball lids. When I first started, I bought a bunch of lids from Timu. Never get lids from Timu. I've learned. I've only I've I've only started buying ball jars, you know, months now, but I still had leftovers. And when I'm making something that is not a big like I don't really care about, I use I do care about it. Don't get me wrong, I care about all my stuff, but I'll use like those Timu lids on the jars. And because it's onions and it's not like chicken or beef or a chicken soup that I'm doing, then I didn't use my ball lids. But because it's just onions, I use those Timu lips. And I think that's why another top blew off. I think it may be defective, the top, the lid and the top. I don't know. But another one came off, I think. I didn't start the whole thing over. I'm going to just let the rest of them, the other three jars, finish doing what it's doing. And I'll just use the onions that the other one came off. But we'll see how it comes out once it's finished. So once it gets to that two, guys, 40 minutes. It's at the two. You start your um, timer for 40 minutes, and then I'll be back in 40 minutes. Okay, y'all. So the pressure, the timer went off. It's been 40 minutes. I turned the stove off, and then before I open up this top, I have to wait for that pressure to come all the way back down to zero. So you can see the dial is slowly coming back down to zero uh all the way to the bottom it's slowly just dropping so once it comes all the way back to zero all, all the way down i'm gonna open this up and we're gonna see what they look like okay i had to change it's late over here so i changed it to my 90s and I'm, i can lift this when you lift this, move it quickly because it's going to be a lot of steam. All right, let's see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so as we can see, like I said, that one top did pop. It did pop. It's smelling like onions. And it looks like more liquid got in there. So what I'm going to do with the one that popped open, I'm just going to use it that's it when that when that happens if the top comes off i mean of course you can't store it now you can't you know put it in your stockpile but look at that guys look at that and all that liquid in there all that liquid in there still bubbling I guess it does make its own, it does make its own liquid. All of that liquid in there. Yeah, so. At least I got three. Three of the four. Three of the four. And you know, you can crack those open, you can make chilies or um you know put that on your your hamburgers hot dogs whatever you like to use onions for you know 
So those are finished. And then we just gotta wait for them to seal. They, they should be sealed in either, you know, the next few minutes. Sometimes mine's sealed in minutes. Sometimes it takes till the next morning. So it all depends. I usually put a towel over them. So it kind of keep the heat in a little bit. But that is your caramelized onions, guys. Pressure canned, and that is what they look like. Yay! All right, thank you guys for being with me while I pressure can onions for the first time. I hope you liked the video. And if you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> All right, have a good night, guys.